February 17, 2015, Town of North Andover Planning Board meeting. Okay, first up is 562 Boxford Street. Jean? Okay. Yep, this is an ANR application to, for a lot line change. Um, Brian Vaughn is here to represent the applicant. You should have seen in your package there was a variance granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, Brian can speak to that and describe the notes here on this ANR plan are important. The applicant. Um, we're just seeking an endorsement for an approval not required plan. Um, I think the most relevant issue on this this plan, if you if you take a look at it, are the um, are the in the notes um, where it says parcel A to be conveyed from Charlotte A Hopping to the Gorton Family Trust and combined with other land of the Gorton Family Trust to form lot two and parcel B to be conveyed from the Gordon Family Trust to Charlotte L. Hopping and combined with other land of Charlotte L. Hopping to form lot one. If you, um, if you look at the kind of the, the top portion of the plan, which is really the relevant portion of the plan, uh, the area identified as parcel A is gonna be conveyed from one lot owner to the other. The area identified as parcel B is gonna be conveyed to, from one lot owner to, to another. Um, this, this lot, is a really oddly shaped triangular lot, as you can see, that um, uh, is currently an undersized lot. It was conforming at the time when it was uh, originally uh, developed. Um, the zoning subsequently changed. So uh, we went to the zoning board and obtained a variance just to make sure that in providing for this lot line adjustment, um, because we would be creating a new lot, we wanted to make sure that we retained the, the grandfathering for the new lot that was being being created. That's why we were before the zoning board. They already approved that. Um, so um, it, it actually is becoming a more conforming lot. Um, the lot size of, of the remaining lot one is actually gonna be increased from what it currently is. Now the house is already existing, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, and the only thing you're, you're putting in the changing the drive. Right, so the drive will be relocated from um, the, the, the left side of parcel A over to, to lot one. And there's no problem with sight lines on that drive? No. Changing the, except right now with the 50 foot high snow banks probably. <laughs> right, yeah, there's <laughs> problems with sight lines everywhere in town right now. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Where where uh, are, is the uh, wetland, or where are the wetlands located? Okay. Uh, if you look at, um, at, at parcel B, um, yeah. you can see the kind of the, the hash line, which creeps down a little bit into, into lot one. Okay. So there is a, there's an existing wetland there, um, and uh, the, um, uh, the, it probably should be noted, we did, I don't know if it, if it was included in, in your package, but when we were before the zoning board, we, there was an issue which was identified by the Conservation Commission with respect to that wetland setback. Um, we revised the plan. The plan that's before you has been subsequently reviewed by the Conservation Administrator um, just to make sure that we had a sufficient um, buildable area for that house should it ever um, be demolished and, and reconstructed. Now, how much land will actually be in lot two? How much land will be in lot two? Uh, it's about 22 acres, more or less. And um, you know, the, the lot two's owned by the Gorton Family Trust, Joyce Bradshaw is a trustee. Um, that lot is presently um, under under agreement, that will be the subject of a of a future filing before this this board for a subdivision. Correct. How much of that lot two would be wetlands, and how much? I, and, any idea? Yeah, it, um, there's a substantial portion of it. Um, I'm yeah. not I'm not sure exactly. Um, but obviously, that will have to all be addressed in. Sure. The, the purchaser of the lot's subsequent um, filings. Peter? 
So I'm going to make a motion to direct the interim town planner to sign the A&R plan. So move. Second. All in favor? Set. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep. Okay. 171 Brentwood Circle bond release. So 171 Brentwood Circle had a pool, an in-ground pool and patio installed, I think approximately two years ago. The site is complete. Conservation has released their bond, um, and as built has been turned in, and a certification letter has been received from the engineer stating it is in co compliance with the original plan. So they have requested their bond release. Did anybody have any questions on that one? Oh, I move we release we release the bond for 171 Brentwood Circle. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Hey. 80, 88 Johnson 88 Street Johnson bond Street. release. Um, 88 Johnson Street. The applicant was going to try to make it tonight, but he could not, and they had had a. For Maiden, several years ago, they constructed a house on one of the lots. What was missing from the file was a covenant that was required. I think I copied everybody on the covenant. He has since submitted that. And the file also did not have the recorded decision, but he did go to the registry. He obtained the recorded decision. It had been recorded. Um, a certificate of occupancy was issued several years ago. They've been living in the house. So I recommend the release of the bond. So that's the covenant. So I'll move. Okay, motion to release the bond. Hmm? Make motion. Yes, so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Is 351 Willow Street on? I think they were postponed. They, they are on, oh, they, John, but oh, they were John on? Simons is expected shortly. Right. Um, yeah. And so he would be the fourth member of the board. So we're going to wait. We'll give him another 15 minutes or so, if you don't mind. We need John for 1046 crew too. So 1046 Great Pond Road, I have actually left a definitive subdivision extension request. Okay. So the applicant is continuing to work on the resolution to the drainage issue. Um, that being said, they've also submitted, last meeting we talked about a proposal to redirect some drainage, both actually leave some directed to the wetland and redirect some others to the back of the lot. Um, they've submitted their watershed special permit application. It actually was noticed today in the paper, so it is on track to be heard on March 3rd. However, the applicant would like to request a waiver of that watershed. Contingent upon um, all the material has already been sent to Lisa Eggleston. She will review the project and understanding that upon her review, if you deem to waive the watershed, we can still condition the definitive subdivision. Um, with any recommendations that Lisa has. So, as John, would you like to speak to the request? Or? John Smolak representing the applicant. Um, I was going to wait till later on in the discussion, but we're almost there anyway. So, um, we had filed, uh, as uh, Gene had indicated, we filed in the alternative either request for watershed special permit or in the alternative uh, request for a waiver from that requirement, specifically because we just didn't want to waste any further time. Or time is short and the spring is coming up pretty quickly. And, um, and this is really a form over substance issue. And uh, the uh, the main reason for the request for the watershed uh, special permit was specifically because of the drainage that's being, uh, the drainage lines that are being redirected and, and modified and stormwater being corrected uh, based on discussions that I believe Phil Christensen had with the board last, at the last meeting. And so uh, that, the work within the, with, uh, with respect to the stormwater lines is what's triggering the watershed protection district special permit. And we could just as easily uh, condition the definitive approval uh, with respect to watershed, with respect to stormwater issues as we could with a watershed protection district special permit. I'm just trying to cut down on the paperwork, but uh, under the um, watershed protection district uh, provisions, it states that uh, when any construction proposed on an existing structure within the watershed uh, district uh, will not expand the existing footprint of a structure and will not disturb the existing topography, and um, is, a, is a proposal on town sewer, the planning board may 
determine without public hearing that uh, submission of a watershed protection district special permit is not required. And so, so basically, uh, we're simply installing these stormwater lines. And, um, and uh, in terms of any protections uh, that may be recommended by, by the town's peer review engineer, we'd be more than happy to include them as part of the definitive uh, subdivision decision that would be discussed at the next hearing. And so this evening, we're simply requesting a waiver from the watershed special permit requirements. Um, and uh, rather than going through the full hearing process for a second item and drafting a second decision, we could condition the definitive approval just as easily. Uh, we can- Why not hold this decision until we approve or disapprove mm -hmm. the, the combined? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's an option too. I mean, if we're happy to do that as well. Um, we could either have two separate hearings and then decide that uh, you only need one, or actually you only need to issue one decision, in which case we could withdraw the uh, watershed uh, special permit application and take care of it that way. It, it really doesn't, uh, I'm just trying to simplify things. And uh, I have no problem with just deferring or continuing that discussion as part of the formal hearing for the watershed. I mean, we should all be more up to speed on what's gonna be happening. Uh, John is actually arriving now. I think sure. it was pretty, uh, I think Phil might be able to speak on this. What, what was actually being done in that back area was a level spreader, was that the structures? Yeah. Do you wanna speak a little bit on what, what's being done that might help make our decision on it? Sure. Yes, Phil Christensen, uh, engineer for the applicant. At present, uh, drainage from Great Pond Road drains into 1046 Great Pond Road property into a catch basin there, and then that discharges southerly towards property of Paulino. And uh, Paulino objected to that drainage going in his direction, and uh, we came up with a, uh, a compromise solution for it. That drainage does eventually feed a wetland, so we couldn't eliminate it entirely. So we spoke to Jack Sullivan, who's Polino's engineer, Gene Willis, and Bruce Thibodeau, and it was agreed that we could put a structure in to divide the flow. So the outlet from that new structure would be just a four-inch pipe going towards Polino's property. Any flows greater than capacity of the four-inch pipe would be directed to the rear of 1046, put through a level spreader, and then that would flow directly to the lake. Uh, so that's a brief summary of what we're doing there. I'll give you the 30 second. They're requesting that Lisa review it under, under the watershed, but combine it basically with the subdivision uh, plan subdivision. And, not have, and not have a separate watershed, even though he did, did do all the filings just in case we said no. So you did the filings? Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's filed as a special permit. The request tonight is yeah. to allow a decision on the drainage to be made as part of the definitive subdivision plan and eliminate the special permit just waive the special permit requirements. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Okay. You file the special permit. We, well, we did file it just so just we yeah. would keep things moving. Notice today. But to everything's been submitted to Lisa for her review already. Yeah. But kind of to eliminate the extra order and the extra paperwork, we're saying, why don't we just waive that and include any decision? I don't mind. Uh, looking at it once and talking about it once, but I still don't understand why we can't file two separate decisions when we technically have to. I mean, we won't slow the thing down. We'll do them both at the same time. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, I mean, the only reason, uh, John, when you were here, um, but the only reason we were looking to do that was just to reduce the paperwork. I mean, we'll, we'll condition the definitive uh, with those conditions if there wasn't a special watershed or special permit. But if you want to have two separate special permits, that's I fine with us. I have to, I mean, okay. for the record, and we won't, yeah. uh, we won't slow you down mm -hmm. at all. We'll review it once right. substantively right. and be done with it. And right. when, when is the uh, watershed uh, special permit, when were we planning on hearing it? It'll be March 3rd. March 3rd. Well, then we're fine because yeah. you, you want until the end of March. We'll just, right. we'll vote on both the same night. We'll okay. Close well, and be that's fine. I mean, they'll just have identical, identical, identical conditions, I guess. So, so again, I, just I know a, it's a little bit of belt and suspenders, but I think it's a but, okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. So with yeah. that, John, you have a request for extension of the yep. subdivision again. So right now we're up 
to a clock of February 28th, the solar So, calendar. yeah, okay, good. So would somebody like to make a motion to approve the request for an extension for this um, subdivision, the 1046 Great Pine Road, uh, Ruddick Estates subdivision until uh, March 31st? And without any prejudice, of course. I'll make a motion to approve the extension until March 31st for 1046 Great Pond Road without prejudice. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And so we'll just withdraw our request for a waiver. Yeah. We'll just, okay. thank you. Okay. So now we're going back to 351 Willow okay. Street. But the rest of it's done. Yeah, my apologies for uh, being like the MBTA. I was a victim of the uh, MBTA today, so. I think if you leave at 5.30, you would be able to make it in time, so. Okay, uh, 351 Willow Street, I can try, okay. Um, 351 Willow Street, I have prepared a draft decision based okay. on our conversation at the last meeting. So where do we stand? What questions or issues were open? This is review is complete. She signed off on the project. Conservation has completed their review, although they did leave it open for one more planning, planning hearing, just to make sure that you didn't have anything come up at this meeting, um, but they're prepared to close as well and issue their order of conditions at their next meeting. And did we have any things we were waiting for other than Lisa's review of the plans? Well, there was just two items that you asked to condition. One was the um, revisit the site. I put in for a year. John Warren is here. He's going to speak to, he would like to see that at a six-month review of occupancy versus available parking spaces on the lot, so to have an independent monitor to go out and look at the parking situation. And one other condition related to the parking area that is being expanded in the rear of the lot, if there's any direct impact on 125 traffic. Um, so they both were included in the decision. And Good evening, for the record. My name is John Moore, and I work for the Moore and Cameron Group. Uh, we're here tonight representing Muffin Realty Trust. Uh, as Jean had stated, uh, at the last hearing, the planning board is pretty much all set with the plans. Lisa's review was completed. Uh, the, we hadn't met with conservation yet, so the planning board asked to keep it open just in case. We met with conservation last week. Conservation's fine with everything. Conservation held the meeting open because their next meeting is next week. They're going to have the decision ready, and they're going to close an issue in the same night. So closing last week wouldn't have gained us any ground. So CONCOM wanted to just keep it open just in case something came up to tonight's meeting and we wouldn't have to reopen the hearing. But they're all set. Um, as Gene had stated, they're gonna close an issue next Wednesday. Uh, there's two conditions that were put into the decision uh, that the planning board had discussed last week or at the last meeting. One with regards to revisiting the site uh, to verify that the parking is still okay based on the parking variance or special permit that was requested. The other issue is to revisit the site to verify that there's no adverse impacts of that parking lot on Route 125. And the only request that I asked, um, it was put in there that we'd come back within a, uh, approximately a year after the issuance of an occupancy permit. I had requested if we could modify that to six months. Uh, there was only one other minor uh, change that we had on the finding of facts under item seven. It had stated that um, distribution was now done by someone else off-site. Uh, it is done off-site, but it was actually still done by Bacon Joy at their air facility. I spoke to Jean this morning about that, and she was just going to revise that. Number seven, it's been updated in your copy here. Yeah, so I believe that was changed. So really tonight, the only thing we were requesting is if it was possible to modify those two inspections, which were conditions 17 and 18, um, under prior to the release of security to uh, approximately six months instead of approximately a year. And we feel that after six months, we should easily be able to evaluate uh, if there's any impacts. Actually, our client, we're going to evaluate the impacts on 125 right after everything's pretty much built before we even build the fence. And if our clients determine they don't want to deal with that issue, we're actually going to put the fence up right then. Uh, we already spoke to conservation. Conservation is actually going to condition the, the order of conditions so that if we decide that we want to put that fence up, all we have to do is review the fence location with the administrator, and we won't have to go back to the commission. 
As you may recall, what we discussed is the fence is actually continued to about this point, and we talked about continuing the fence along and off the backside towards the Andover bypass. So we were hoping that you know, within six months, we should definitely know if the parking's sufficient and if we're having an issue with 125. Okay, I mean, my preference would be to wait a year if you choose to do something prior to a year. God bless you. That takes it off the table. Uh, but, you know, it gives us four seasons uh, okay. a cycle. So we're not going to make it difficult for you. We're not going to call you in every quarter or anything. Right. But, you know. Okay. So let's, I mean, let's see. Does, go, uh, your, we have to close the public hearing, right? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. That's true. Um, so uh, if somebody can make a motion to uh, close the public hearing for the site, uh, site plan review special permit for uh, Bacon Joy, Muffin Realty Trust. Move we uh, close the uh, site plan review special permit for uh, 351 Willow Street South, Muffin Realty Trust. Okay, motion made to close the public hearing. Somebody want to make a second? Second. And second, all in favor? All right. All right, okay, let's dig in. Partially in Andover. Does not know that. In the very first paragraph on the second page, at the top you have two periods. The end of the catch the important things here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Condition 18, um, showing proof that there's been no direct impact on 125. I didn't list what criteria they'd have to meet. I mean, other than there haven't been any accidents or complaints. I don't know if you have any thought on how you can condition I mean, that. From my point of view, I think it's a little bit soft. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like this is where you come in. You know, you um, may have to go out there sometime and uh, oh, poke around. Oh, and, 125. Yeah, uh, 17 is easier. You can show a study of occupancy. Yeah, rate. I mean, this is. Um, Shy of any complaint coming in, or we can yeah, I mean, I think it's to give okay. any complaints. Yep, that's fine. Uh, there things that are readily noticeable. Okay. I think that's fine. Everybody done? Yep. Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the site plan review for 351 Willow Street South. Second. Okay, That's motion amazing. made and seconded. I'm sorry. As amended. As amended. Yeah, one for those. We didn't have very many. This no, is uh, very good. This is, might have been the all time <laughs> low. So it's a good, a good thing I caught the period because I would have yeah. felt that we weren't doing our job. So a motion made and seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. discussion items, so 94 Flagship Drive. Um, Steve so we, we did all the ones? Yeah, those are all okay, done. Good. Okay, what's up with that? Um, so 94 Flagship. To be honest, based on my recommendation, Steve Webster has come in to try to present, to present a site plan for 94 Flagship Drive, which let me bring up the locus for you. Um, Steve has had I can attest many conversations with Kurt Bellavance in the past and with Matthew Eggie on this site plan. And I came in very late in the game. So what I've asked Steve to do is come in because there was, I think based on Matt Eggie's recommendation, um, the proposal is to add a loading dock to the front side of the building facing Flagship Drive and some sidewalk and at a concrete pad. And in lieu of that, I guess based on discussions with Matt, he had recommended since we're adding approximately 2,300 square feet of impervious surface to kind of counter that in the rear of the lot and take up some of the pavement and make it bring it back to pervious towards the rear. And Steve will go over this, but that's highlighted in green there. I will bring up the locus first. Um, with that, he, he's now within buffer zones to a wetland. Um, which would require some conversation with, conversa with Conser Conservation Commission. And I think, Steve, you've had some with Jennifer to date, right? Yes. Okay. Sorry, let me just find this locus. Okay. So for those of them not familiar, Flagship Drive is actually off of Willow Street, which you come in across from Mill Road off of 114. So as you come in off of 114, you would take an immediate left. And the yellow highlight there, is where 94 flagship is. And so this is a better view of the site itself. Now, this property was recently purchased by the abutting owner, which is a metal finishing company. So this is their second location. They abut side to side. Um, and I'll turn it over to Steve to show. Can you make, give me a version of that that's a little smaller because I want to see what's around it. OK. Um, so it kind of comes up to a cul-de-sac here. Let me I, part of the reason why I mention it, why I want to zone in on this is so, way, way, way back in time, even before I got on the planning board, uh, when this commercial project was first uh, being built, there were some issues with the houses of Marion Drive. So, the, so Marion uh, Drive does directly abut in the back, and you can see these map parcels in, in the lower corner there, you see a house on the back side? Yeah, I mean, it was one of the more um, messy 
issues of the relationship of commercial property and residential property than you know that I've seen since since I've been involved in this. So I I look at that as a filter for, because we can't just say even though it's de minimis that necessarily it might not have an impact. So that that's my, yeah. I mean, and I apologize to Steve because I know and I have email correspondence between Kurt and Matt and Steve has been very much involved with the process getting to this point with those two. Um, it is a button in the neighborhood. It used to be Kevlon, True Green, True Green Kevlon. They actually in 95 permitted an additional 43 parking spaces um, when they were Kevlon. So they have more than enough parking. However, the use now is going from that use to, Steve can describe the metal finishing use. And in addition to adding some impervious surface, there's di different ventilation requirements and things like that. Um, and what's being added is a load and dock for tractor trailer. So, Steve, take over. Hey, my name is Steve Webster. I'm with. Steve, just, uh, mm -hmm. You are transferring something down from New Hampshire. There's a business that would be right. combining uh, with the current operations to supplement that I, and I have, moving down. I have a lot of concerns about a metal plating operation mm -hmm. being fairly close to uh, residential areas and to, I think there's some wetlands around in there somewhere. And also, there was an episode with the plant up in New Hampshire. Excuse me? There was an episode with the plant up in New Hampshire, the office manager. I'm not familiar with, uh, what, with that. You Google it. OK. Well, go ahead. All right. My name is Steve Webster. I'm with Dutton and Garfield. Uh, we've been working on this project uh, since they bought the building uh, in late 2013. We had a meeting with Judith. Timing at the time, and um, <clears throat> we needed a dock to access this building for this operation. Uh, in that discussion, actually, the owner brought it up that because of the sensitivity to the neighbors, uh, that um, we put the dock on the opposite side of the, the building away from the neighbors. Uh, so that's what's shown on this drawing. It's a 300 square foot bump out here. Uh, the plan shows a, a realigning of the driveway so we can bring the trucks in and back up behind the building, if you will, on the street side. As part of this transfer, we would be removing and paving here, uh, and then we would replace uh, the, the orange would be the the uh, what we pave, and then the, the green areas is what we would uh, transfer. One of the first things we did was have Mark West go out and flag this area because we had done work back there, I think it was 1995, to on the last site improvements. So Mark went out, uh, Phil located the flags. Uh, we went back in. There was a, also a, a, a proposal to put a container, which we had located here. In Matt's review, he asked to move that outside the buffer. Um, so it's a fairly simple uh, reconfiguration of the site to allow them for dock access, um, but on the opposite side of the building, of course, for the neighbors. In July, uh, we met with Kurt, and uh, he asked for all the backup information, which we gave him for all of the notices of decision the certificates of compliance for the wetlands work and so forth. Given that, he indicated that he uh, felt that he could handle this as a minor site plan review and, and uh, review it internally. Subsequent to that, we went ahead and had uh, Phil do the yeah, plan. By the way, that might be his opinion, but he doesn't get to speak for the board, you know. I mean. I've been informed of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Kurt handed it off to Matt. We worked with Matt on uh, you know, massaging this plan. Um, he was satisfied with it. Um, as we put our plans together to, to move to apply to the building department, I went down to the fire department and met with the uh, code enforcement, uh, Fred McCarthy down there, and uh, he signed off on it. He didn't have a problem with it. He wanted a, an engineered plan for the internal operations of the building. Uh, which we have an a engineer in place for that. We had a small glitch, which we discovered inside here, which was a, in, the, in the history of it, 
they had a backup dock on this end. And at the time, they had a catch basin there. Well, while we were doing our planning, we found a manhole cover in that corner, opened it up, and found that the drainage ran under the building and then back out again. So we called Phil back in, and he shot the grades to that and modified the plan so that we could redo the drainage to, to have it uh, act properly and not go underneath the building. So that's the, the gist of the of the, the, the movement around the, the structure. Uh, the question came up and during our discussions as far as the, the replacement area, we, we figured we'd take pavement away from this end, which would complement that um, area. So I've had a conversation with conservation and she thought I, I should submit for uh, determination of applicability. So we would do that. And my understanding is the abutment property, the same owner is operating the same use with that, the abutment property? That's correct. Yes, that they, they play parts for the aerospace industry, Raytheon, those types of people. It's uh, pretty well laid out in her narrative. Minimus that it doesn't need notice to the neighbors, in all honesty. I mean, we've had projects that, like, even the town gym got notice to the neighbor, mm -hmm. the town fire department. It just it seems like notices to the neighbor have to go out. You know, we don't know what they're, you know, we know what you're saying. It seems like there's no impact on the neighborhood, but until we hear their point of view, we don't know. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see the full, uh, you know, a conservation consultant's review on this project. I mean, you're talking some pretty powerful assets in a, t in a plating operation, I think. Air industry is highly regulated. Um, yeah. And, um, and and I'm sure that they can explain it better than I. Okay. Um, but uh, In New Hampshire, the office manager, I think, or the plant manager, was sentenced to two years in jail for falsifying EP, the EPA reports. Well, we got to separate what's our responsibility yeah, yeah. from other areas of responsibility. I mean, we have a, if it's an allowed use, which it is, uh, we have jurisdiction over certain things, but other, the building inspector and other people have jurisdiction over other things. And I don't want to step on other people's turf, you know, in terms of that. So, I mean, it's fair to raise the issue broadly, but we can't drill down into it in excruciating detail. I mean, it's just not our role to do that. So if, if there's an element of Board of Health environment or police or fire or the building inspector, fine, that needs to happen anyway, but it's, it's, it's not, you know, uh, our primary responsibility to make sure those things happen. My feeling is that we need to look at it closer than, than just a little A&R review tonight. Uh, site plan review. Yeah, well, we have to look. We are. We can't look at it any more broadly in site plan review because we don't have the illegal authority. No, but a site plan review we that. have to do. Yeah, and I, I, I think we. Think, yeah, I think okay. it said, you know, that a site. They were trying to not have a site plan review. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. I think so far. Uh, Laura, I think yeah. that, that's not the case. Oh no. 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 Oh, it's on our agenda for a waiver of site plan review. Correct. Yeah. Oh. So that's yeah. So, but we've been working with staff for a year and a half on it, and it's not well, like we're trying to pull something here. So, that's, I, I mean, that's we, we can uh, go through this fairly. No, you're not, and, yeah. I, and I don't think that's the intent. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you coming in, yes, and I think sure. you've been very straight with us and you know fairly detailed with us. But I think, I think the consensus of the board is that we wouldn't waive site plan review for any number of reasons, and we'll get you one quickly and we'll get through it sure. quickly. We don't want to hold you up. And, you know, if we had known about three months ago, we would have advertised it already and mm -hmm. we would have had the hearing. But, mm -hmm. you know, this is the first we've heard about it, so. Is there any comment that you could give me or, or guidance here? Um, you know, as we discussed it with staff, we talked about, you know, this uh, replication of impervious area, uh, previous area, rather, uh, at that end of the site. Uh, I mean, if you could give me any comments in the meantime uh, while I have it up here. 40 storage container, what's it made of? Why are you going to have it? I mean, is it a big conics box in the back yeah. of the property? And what's, why would you do what's that? What's going to be in it and so forth? Well, why, why would, if it's an 8 by 40 conics box, I mean, those are hideous looking. Why not just build a small addition to the building if that's the case? Okay. 
I mean, are you talking one of those metal storage boxes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what, what is it then? Those, uh, a shipping sure. container. Oh, it's a shipping container. Those big 8 by 40 metal, okay. you know, which end up with graffiti all over them when you see them around towns, you know. Yeah. Um, if you're going to do that, you'd, I'd say it should be screened and fenced in or something like that, screening okay. or something. I, I don't know quite what views there are, but those are pretty hideous looking boxes. I don't know it, why. That's right. And there's a, there is, it's not shown on here, but there is an existing dumpster enclosure uh, that needs repair. I did visit with Board of Health. There was a dumpster permit uh, when True Green had it in place and she said she could just transfer that once we got ready. So. Uh, will you be combining the manufacturing operations of the two buildings? They will be, yes. Mm -hmm. Will there be material being transferred back and forth? Yes, there will. Probably, you know, we might want to know what that is and mm -hmm. what the condition is. Yeah, more of an explanation of how the two interact. Mm -hmm. yeah. At least our consultant, uh, the environmental people might they, want to know. Uh, they have a hygienist that can explain those things. Mm -hmm. Did you say there were changes to the ventilation as well? There, part of the operation, there's ventilation involved, yes. Air compressors and that you know, was part of their, their I mean, the operation. fact that you were that's the use that you have next door and there haven't been complaints. That says something that, you know, I mean, initially when I heard this use, I said, oh my gosh, you know, we'll have to address that. Sure. But if, if in fact you've been doing exactly the same type of use next door, uh, it probably if you use the same type of ventilation, I would presume that it's quiet and muffled and doesn't create any noise. Yes, it was uh, a problem a couple of years ago. It turned out it was 70, it wasn't 80. So. And they, they ended up putting up some screens or some such yeah. thing. Okay. We're familiar with the neighborhood. We uh, brought Watts to that neighborhood when, from yeah. Lawrence years ago. And uh, the last work we did there, we had a parking lot, which they were concerned about headlights shining through the, yeah. the trees right. type yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. So if we could have you in, we would, uh, we would much appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. Very good. good. Thank you. Okay, are we down to the downtown, uh, downtown overlay district? Yes. Okay. okay, so um, as discussed in the past, we've had some collaboration with um, Dave Steinberg and his team. Lynn and I have met. Mike also was included in that, Michael Colantoni. Lynn and I um, recently reviewed the most recent um, draft version and what I forwarded to you was our pass. Um, again, after a couple of deliberations up to now. So what we'd like to do, I mean, we're getting somewhat close to the warrant closes on March 9th. Um, having sent that draft, I guess we'd be interested if there's any high level, broad comments that of anything you saw that, you know, either you're really in favor of, you want more explanation for, or, you know, just, see as a showstopper that just would would not want to have that type of language. Um, to be honest, I just got it to Dave and his team early this morning, so I'm not sure they've gone in tremendous detail through it. So what I would ask is we'd be able to, again, revisit our latest pass with them, but take into consideration anything that may have jumped out at you at this point. Um, I think the one thing I think the applicant requested, and I didn't want to put it in our draft, was there they wanted the waiver to 70 feet. And we don't have that anywhere in town. So I think maybe the applicant can plead their case on why they think this site's appropriate and know all the place in town is. And at the, the board, building height. yeah, the building height. I think that's probably the a lot of some our formatting and our downtown overlay wasn't great. We tried to keep the formatting. Seth actually fixed it and it looked better, but we put, went back to our formatting a little bit, so it coincides with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if you were trying to explain this to a town media audience, what would be your 30 second or one minute explanation of how you would explain it? Um, first, I do. I want to show you the locus of because I want to keep everybody to keep in mind that it not only creates a subdistrict with different 
you know, look and feel than our downtown, but it does incorporate two parcels that today are not within the downtown, and that transition piece from the residential to the mixed use and business use, I think we've been very sensitive to. So if there's one thing I want to make sure that everybody's aware of um, at this point is that it does incorporate two additional parcels, and the language that we included was really to try to facilitate that transition into this property. Um, and, and as far as to the public, I mean, it, it, this area just creates, it's a, it's a different look and a different um, configuration than downtown and therefore the zoning. Um, so the, you're saying the size and the scale of the buildings size, and the property Size and scale, the property, yeah. um, the build out within, the available space within the property still to be built out. Um, it's unique. Yeah. It's unique, it's unique. And, and the scale is just much different than the property downtown. So, okay. Can you show and us the historic aspect of it and maintaining that look? Yeah. Um, Can you show us what got added? Uh, so within, you see where right where it says downtown overlay district, and it has Z's through it. So those two pieces, you see the what pond. What are those the thingies? Z's. Where? Z's. The letter Z. The letter Z. The letter Z. Okay. So you can see the the blue pond on one and then it's yellowish on the other piece. So that one is behind 4 High Street, or 21 High Street, I think, we refer to it as now. The baseball field and the garage. Um, well, I'm talking yeah. the two that are within the downtown yeah. overlay now, and then the old railroad right away is that gray line that separates two additional that are half gray and half yellow. We probably need to get a tighter version of that for something because I'm, I'm, I'm okay, messing so it. Here's, yeah. here's, yeah. Okay, so here's the, um, so as Lynn spoke, now you can see that baseball field and you can see the parking deck. So in the, pre were not in, the in the previous Which, version. Well, okay, wait a second. Up to the right, up to the top. Uh, do you want to go back to the other one, John? Okay. So, so the baseball field. The baseball field. And the parking deck. And the parking deck. Those two parcels today are not within the downtown overlay. Oh, oh okay. okay, so oh, so, so the first one you showed us was the old and the, the so other one the first one, one, the one is the downtown overlay is, includes the parcels where the Converse and Snyder properties were and across the street where Jamie's Stachy's that, that mill oh, Okay, I see, that okay. makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, if you were on the site, you would think that they were part of it anyway. You would, yeah. but they, they were not including the downtown overlay. So this sub-district would include those two parcels. Um, and you can see abutting them are some residential neighborhoods as well as Walker Road abuts where the parking garage is yeah. and Sutton Pond condominiums abut where that ballpark is. Yep, okay, got it. Um, so as you read through this language, those are within the new sub-district and some of the language and, and the transition is intended to do just that transition from residential towards the mill buildings. And again, to somebody who's uninitiated, uh, how would you explain a transition? What would be a transitional use? I'm sorry, what would be? What would be like an example of a transitional use that's allowed the transition um, from? Well, I guess to Lynn's point, that's why we want to be very well aware of the building height mm -hmm. within context of um, those properties and those parcels so that as you transition um, building height comes into play as well as the use so trying to get a sense as can we have buildings that have residential use as well as um, commercial maybe lower do we want just residential um, that, that type okay. of transition uh, but I, I guess a little bit the notion would be is that if you were doing a transition, you would step down what you would expect in terms of height as you got closer to where the residential is. Right, and I'm coming from the other point, so yes. I mean, I guess step up as you get closer to the mill building. Yeah, maybe right, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm coming from yeah. that direction, but right, yeah. yes. Okay. That's okay. Nice. And, but again, I just, I think, um, getting a sense of the master plan and allowing a master plan process so that we can see those faces and how that would look will be yeah. important too. I think the applicant so. put in um, a suggestion that it was based on, because that also, that zoning line partial is IS and partially in residential and that a 
anything we built in that area would probably go on to both sides and saying, well, if it's 50% on the residential side, it'll be at least 50% residential. If it's 70%, you know, something like that. I keep, they put in language on that. Right, so the which PDD, yeah. the PDD yeah. right now has that. language that if more than, I, yeah. I don't quote me, but if more than 25% yeah. of the property is within the residential zone, then 51% of the building yeah. would be residential. So we've incorporated language very similar to the PDD oh. in that. So, what do people think? Does everybody want a chance to read it again? So, the ball field? Yeah. This is probably an obvious question, but I, I just don't know the answer to it. This adds the ball field to the downtown area. The downtown overlay within subdistrict A, we're right. calling it. Yep. So, what does that mean for the ball field? I don't think anyone really uses it as a ball field, do they? I mean, that's my question. I mean, is that is that an issue? Is that ball field something that's but, valued I mean, by? Dave can speak to that. I mean, it, it's in What's the that? ownership of the property. So. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the ball fields, which you know have been there for a while, be right. used by the corporate users have never really been used. Okay. They sort of sit out there, and I, I just want to make a couple. So it, it's not a neighborhood. Not use. a neighborhood it's park. Not no. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Um, just a couple quick points because it sort of stands out in the plans. One is that there's this sort of streak running through the property, which I think creates some of the distraction as you look at the downtown overlay and, and maybe a false um, impression that you're really leaving it. But that parcel, for some reason, hasn't been carried by the assessor's office as part of the Davis and Ferber property, but is owned fee simple by the Davis and Ferber property and was actually, the railroad was granted an easement for a period of time over it, but obviously the railroad is no longer there, and that's why it's part of the parking lots and development parcels that are here. So it sort of has a funny appearance in the zoning map. Um, yeah, how there's sort of like a, a separation there between the yellow mm -hmm. sections. Should really be included. It's not carried on the assessor's map, but it's sort of included in what the property is valued as. Right, I because mean, it seems to me that uh, they clearly you know, there may be some residual easement rates, but it, the property belongs to you. So right, right. So I was thinking in the map, you know, as much want. as possible in the map, I think that that, we should try to correct that street because yeah. it's not a separate ownership. Yeah. It's included, yeah. my understanding from the assessor's office is actually included in the parcels as far as valuation and other things. It was just carved out from the historical use that they thought it was a different thing. So, because we do want to emphasize that, right, it's, it's the property that's already there and is, there is continuity with the downtown. If you look at it in the sort of big picture. Um, and I think the other, um, to backtrack to sort of the big picture and why we're asking for this subdistrict, was really what we're trying to do is, is we're in a couple overlays now. We're in the downtown overlay. We have a PDD overlay here. And we're trying to sort of marry these things to one concept to what people think is the right development plan. I don't think there's, even in the language here and when we're talking about height, there's actually not much that's new. It's more, sh you know, taking from those two districts what makes sense for this parcel. So I think, um, going back to the question of height, there are the the buildings on the site. Are there's a couple in one case if you count the tower on the other side, but the converse building is about 70 feet tall. So that's why. And when we came and did the waiver process last year for being on the downtown overlay, the historic parcels, I think we were on the same page that if we took down buildings and it was by the Converse building and it was in you know, that area of the site, that type of waiver might make sense for the right type of building. And in this case, we're trying to get a consistent approach to the whole site, so as we plan out development, um, we could pick the spots on the site that made the most sense for the, the different types of uses. Um, it's also hard to tell from the picture of the topography. Obviously, there's a valley in the middle of the site, and you go significantly uphill pretty fast on Prescott Street, so there's things in play. And we really um, tried to, to lay out with setbacks what would be the appropriate areas to address height or to address commercial uses versus residential uses by doing that. For instance, you know, there'd be a 100-foot setback if we were talking about a taller building than what was allowable by right in the IS anyway, which I believe is 55. Um, I think those are the two main areas that popped up there. So you, you, you guys just got this, so you haven't had a chance to yeah, look at yeah. it and, and, and make recommendations. 
because I think there's sort of two dimensions as I see this happening. We may notice some things that we think can be crafted a little bit better just by iterations. But if there's any areas where we disagree, you know, and it's, I think it's very much a good phase. So, but if we disagree, we disagree, we should put it on the table and work our way through it uh, and resolve, which I, I'm sure we will be able to. But if we're under the premise that you agree with everything and you're not, then we got to get that on the table. So, uh, I think there are some key points height was addressed and there are a couple other dimensional type questions. I think there's a, a couple other process questions and language that we want to make sure uh, we've had a good chance to look at and figure out what the right resolution there would be. We don't want to get into, end up in a circular trap. Wordsmith mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in 18.90 under purpose, mm -hmm. does not detract from the livability and aesthetics of aesthetic qualities of the environment. Livability. Uh, I don't know who came up. There has to be a better word. <laughs> there has to. There's a lot. If you read, well, what I see is oh, yeah. a few away. Away. I just know it's that there has to be a better. I came up with 20, but yeah. you know, there's a better word. Well, yeah, certainly we encourage if there, and I think there's some things where we're trying to address, you know, there's a hundred yeah. sort of sentences here, plus sentences that might be able to be phrased a little bit better. So we're going to work on that okay. as well. Like and um, no. both in a technical sense and right just for the, the concept of what explains what we're trying to get at yeah. better. We, we agree with that and we'll Actually, spend time on that as well. We a conversation about this on definitions. We can't define, a, use and put a definition for like hotel or what we think a hotel is because the hotel is used anywhere else in the bylaw. It requires an amendment so it's, it's I, no, I agree yeah. with you, but there's, yeah. certain, but there's a lot of problems with no, just making this overlay and stuff. I know, and that's such a minor thing. Yeah, just, that but was it. Yeah, because we're like, what's a hotel? Well, it has beds. Well, a doctor's office might have a bed, you know? Right. <laughs> or, 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 you know, different. Uh, yeah. I think it's good. Well, you so. could do that. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, know it yeah. when you see it. Uh. Well, exactly. <laughs> that's sort of what we set it up at at some point. Yeah. So. What, uh, what's their time frame on this now? Please? The next meeting. Yeah, we have to yeah. we have to get everything done by the next meeting so we can direct Gene to get it into the war. I mean, yeah. like it or not, even after that, there's a little bit of a push and pull. I mean, but one of the things that we we had done in the past from some of these changes is literally to the day of town meeting, which is not what we want to do. I think we want to get this in as good shape as possible for the ninth, and certainly by the time the warrant is finalized. We, we at least among ourselves ought to all be in consensus on this, so without any more changes. So. Yeah, so again, I was hoping at this point, if for those that have read it, if you see anything that you want so to add comment to, we will be the, happy to meet with the group. In general, I thought you had covered the, the issues I could think of, but I'm trying to read that thing on a little laptop. Yeah. And, you know, flip, uh, it's, it's so now, right? our homework yeah. is to go through one more time mm -hmm. and provide feedback, and you are asking uh, the team here to do the same, and you'll get their feedback right. right so hopefully we can meet with your team, please sometime between now and the March 3rd meeting, and then if we can come back one more time on March 3rd. And hopefully finalize yeah. that. And yeah. So feel free to let us all know, and you're going to, Lynn and Michael are going to participate yeah. in that process. So. One yeah. question on your the railroad easement roads section lot. How far does it go out, out since it's not on the... <laughs> it's basically a straight line. It's, it's hard to describe. So yeah. if you drew the line straight on each side, across the railroad parcel. <laughs> so if you look on the east mill side of the garage, okay. you see it running from the house on Prescott. Okay. They basically go straight across it, but yeah. look like the natural lot line. Okay. Um, okay. And it's, right, that. And the, then you must have crossed the easements with the other properties, or are, there, or are they just? There, well, there are lots of other easements. I mean, there's yeah, a sewer say, easement, there's a electrical easement, there's all these things, but so I think. You, so basically, you couldn't, Build on that little section, or at least on the parts of it. Because you, parts of it, we could. I mean, we right. We own them, but there are areas that we have to preserve access for the electric company, or you okay. know, make sure the sewer line can be accessed. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's actually, even though it looks very narrow on the site, it's a significant 
you know, part of the, part right, of the yeah. property and establishes the continuity. So yeah. it's helpful. It's not, what happens beyond the Davidson Ferber lines of that property is actually a mystery that we were trying to unwind with <laughs> okay, Judy so as well. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's apparently town land, but the town doesn't have it on their own record. So nobody's really sure. Sometimes those things disappeared. Yeah. From, so when you said, well, as far as ownership, yeah. Seth, I didn't see where you pointed, but does it go all the way down to where it says Walker Road on the screen? Uh, no. Yeah, I'll provide you this, our survey. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's basically the, the line along the Walker Road condos yep. straight down to the, the parcel one of the East Mill, which is where the pond is. It doesn't follow the river upstream. It comes it straight across. Okay. That was our understanding is that. Okay. Right. And then on the other side, you and sort this of... this section right up there that, that sort of subdivides the two yellow things? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah that's filled in. That's our land. That's part of what you guys own that? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's not like you've just got a little sliver of land there. But no. how, how does it affect the, with the from a land? That's no. What no. Uh, no. So, you, so, you, so that supposed that the town owns, you think? Or right. someone that's <laughs> no man's land? No, no, no man's land. Okay. I wouldn't suggest going back there. <laughs> it's sort of like a dump. We, we've gone with our own people to clean it, but it's sort of a dumping ground. Yeah. It's uh, overgrown. And, uh, oh, the teenagers. Come the teenagers. Yeah. Teenagers. You go up and find the back. Now, Judy, back in there. your day, was that known to be a place? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a teenage son. <laughs> we were down the other <laughs> end. <laughs> we, were, we, were much, we were more downtown than that. <laughs> So I think just as far as the schedule, we're going to get yeah. comments back probably by the end of tomorrow. Let's say so you'll have comments okay. by Thursday if we if the board can give us a little time, yeah. like a week uh, before the next hearing. On there. We're, I mean, I feel like we want to get this right, so yep. you know, take as much or as little time as you need. So, yeah. Yeah. but I was saying if we can get if the board can do whatever their feedback is, we can try to incorporate it all before yeah. the next meeting and see if okay. there's any right. yeah. pushback okay. there. Like a smaller group meeting next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A smaller group meeting next week with the yeah. subcommittee yeah. would be mm -hmm. ideal. Yeah, we can use the working group again, yep. um, but if anybody can provide right. feedback by the end of this week so that mm -hmm. we have everything, and then hopefully on the third, that we've got a pretty good pass at this. Sure. Um, so we can get it on the warrant from there. Of course, in addition to this, we need a map warrant article as well um, right. to differentiate yeah. the two. Yeah. And as we also talked about we, have, we want to rescind the two year one. It just passes. Right. So, so we don't want yep, to have that. Good. So yeah. part yeah. of this Clean draft is removing the waiver provisions that were put in last time. Yeah. So they were put in, I think, in an attempt to provide some flexibility over this two-year two period, um, but they'd be removed going forward. And that's yeah. why I commented on the numbering. Some of that is going to get fleshed out the yeah. closer we get, but it's structurally, it's it'll be similar to this. Excellent. Good. Great. Thank you. Good work. This is this is good. This is good. It's kind of an iterative thing, isn't it? You you kind of think through a little bit, and then you you lay out some uh, you know principles, and then you do it again, and you know until you get it right. And, yep. You know, I, I mean, it's nothing in the end is ever going to be perfect, but I. I think we've, you know, I think you've done a very nice job, so. Yeah. Okay, what else we got here? I'll make a motion to approve the February 3rd, 2015 meeting minutes as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anything else we need to do before we break? No. Nope. Good. Then a motion to adjourn? Yes. Adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.